lovelier face, a more attractive figure, an insight to fashion. All are yours for the asking, as is the Glamour record on Gateway to Glamour with Eleanor Shano. Recently, I did research for this program by spending the day with one of the country's leading fashion designers of maternity clothes. We discussed many things, and we both agreed that the smart lady-in-waiting will wear the most conservative type of maternity clothes. Basic colors are preferred and simple basic lines. And yet at the same time, the designer explained that one of the most popular items in her collection has always been the bright colored costumes and also the accordion pleated two-piece designs. We both agreed that these are perhaps the wrong kind of clothes for the woman in waiting to wear. And yet she explained that she continues to design them and manufacture them because after all it's her job to please the public. We want to talk today about some of the things that the lady in waiting should wear and some of the things she shouldn't wear. If, for example, you like bold bright colors and the full accordion pleated designs, confine the wearing of these items to at home. When you go out in public, I think it's much better to minimize your expanding figure by wearing dark, simple clothes. Now this is one of the most popular items in her collection this season. As you can see, it is bold and it's an attention getter if I've ever seen one. This is what the women want. And yet, let's face it, if you were to walk down the street in a dress like this, you're certainly going to cause quite a bit of attention. And I think this is what the woman who is expecting a baby does not want to do. Certainly you want to keep yourself looking as attractive as you possibly can. You want to wear the latest styles, and if you enjoy color, wear bright colors. But to wear a striped one-piece outfit like this is certainly going to call attention to a full figure. Even though the stripes are done in a vertical manner, because of the bold colors, and incidentally they're orange and red and green and brown and yellow, it is certainly not the preferred item for your daytime away from home costume. We do suggest something like this, a solid colored jumper. The reason that this is so very practical is because, as you can see, you can change the costume simply by changing your choice of blouses. If you like something a bit unusual, here is a muted print. The colors are very subtle, it's very attractive, and yet it's a bit out of the ordinary. And this is a good choice if you sort of feel that you want something different than the plain black, navy blue, or gray. We have one other costume to show you, and this is a wonderful maternity ensemble for special occasions after five. If you've noticed, we've shown you all one-piece designs because we feel that these are the ones that will minimize the size of your figure, and they're certainly the most attractive items in the maternity woman's wardrobe. Do any of your friends have telephone-itis? Well, that's a name we use to refer to people with bad telephone manners. It's a very common disease, and there are many symptoms. Many of them are going to sound very familiar. Just watch. Hello, Helen, how are you? Oh, it's so good to hear your voice again. So loud and boisterous, so that the person on the other end of the line probably has a shattered eardrum. The opposite extreme. Hello, Helen, how are you? So good to hear your voice again. This time, so soft that the poor person has to strain to hear every word. Now, since our personality is expressed by the tone of our voice on the telephone, it's important to have a well-modulated tone. Another symptom of telephonitis, the person who fails to identify himself immediately. Hello, Mrs. Lawrence. Say, would you mind picking up my children after school today? I have to meet my husband in town for lunch, and I know I'll never get back in time. What? Well, why, this is Mrs. Perkins. Didn't you recognize my voice? Besides being rude, this is a real time waster. Make sure that you identify yourself immediately and don't rely on the other person recognizing your voice. Now, this next bad telephone habit is a pet peeve of mine, and I'll bet yours, too. Hi, Sally. This is Helen. Are you busy? Oh, you are. 
Well, I, I won't keep you but a minute. I wanted to tell you about our vacation plans. We've just about decided to go to... And on and on and on she goes for an endless period of time. Now, this is very bad manners to keep Sally on the phone when she's very busy just because you happen to be idle at the moment. And how do you feel when your friend's young children answer the phone, especially when you want to be brief? Now, this can be very, very annoying. I know that it's a big thrill when a two or three year old begins to talk and can speak over the telephone, but realize it's usually only the grandmas and grandpas who enjoy this sort of uh, fooling on the telephone. Another pet peeve of mine, and this I'm sure has happened to you, you're speaking to a friend on the phone, she says, oh, just a moment please, and off she goes to answer the doorbell, carries on a five minute conversation with the laundry man or uh, has an argument with her cleaner. In the meantime, you're just sitting, waiting patiently on the phone. And what do you do when you dial a number and it turns out to be the wrong number? Are you angry, upset, and just hang up? You know, the polite, courteous thing to do is to just acknowledge the fact that it is the wrong number, say, I'm sorry, I've dialed incorrectly, and then hang up. You know, good manners and graciousness are all part of a woman's charm. And one day before too long, you'll be able to see the person on the other end of the line and then you're going to have to be more tactful. In the meantime, I think it would be a good idea for all of us to uh, take stock of those good and bad telephone manners, and uh, if they are bad, let's try to recuperate completely from telephone-itis. What every woman wants to know about charm and beauty is yours regularly here on Gateway to Glamour with Eleanor Shano. Since our Glamour series has been on television, I am more convinced than ever before that women are sincerely interested in improving their appearance. We've talked quite a bit about complexion care. We've spent a lot of time talking about facial masks. We've demonstrated a mask for oily skin, the egg mask, and also the one-minute quickie-type mask. We've had many inquiries, though, from women who feel that they want a mask designed for the aging skin, for the dry skin problem, and that is what we're going to demonstrate today. There are several products on the market. They're all excellent, and they're designed specifically for the mature skin, for the dry skin. These masks should all be applied after every speck of makeup has been cleansed from your face. Now this particular one is so concentrated, it penetrates so deeply that it should only remain on your face for 15 minutes, and five minutes is really long enough. Now the reason that this is designed for the mature skin that it has great powers of firming and toning all of the facial muscles. Now you notice I'm applying it slowly, working up and out, and I'm being very careful not to go near the eyes. Don't forget about the chin though. When applying any facial mask, work down, under the chin line, covering the throat and the forehead. Now this mask will penetrate deep into the skin, purge out any impurities, tone and firm, and incidentally, this also will whiten an aging skin. A lot of older women complain about a yellow, pasty look to their complexion and also the fact that they notice age spots appearing. A mask of this type will tend to eliminate those spots. It will whiten and brighten and freshen your complexion. Now this mask does not harden. It can be tissued and removed just as simply as that. You can feel the tingling effects immediately. After you've removed every trace of the facial mask, then you should apply a rich cleansing cream and finish with an astringent. 
So if your skin is dry, if you're bothered with lines and wrinkles, if your skin is mature, use a facial mask once a week, one particularly designed to counteract these problems.